I feel like people always hate on chicken breasts because they're always overcooked and end up hella dry. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cook the most perfect, moistest, softest chicken titties you have ever put inside your mouth. What is good everyone, Philip here again, and if you're new to this channel, I post weekly videos on all things good in food, my life, and business. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe. Like I said earlier, people are always hating on chicken breasts, and it's because straight up, they're always overcooked, and they always come up super dry. A lot of people actually prefer thighs over breasts because they think that they're more juicy, but it's really just because they have more fat. A lot of people that I know that are trying to lose weight actually prefer chicken breasts because they're more lean and they do a lot more of their meal preps with boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I did some research and found a recipe on SeriousEats.com that breaks down the different temperatures and lengths of time to cook in chicken breasts to get a juicy, tender chicken without the stringy, tough, dry texture. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I plan to cook my chicken breast for the rest of my life. The most important tool you're gonna need to pull this off is gonna be a sous vide. These things are perfect for cooking food at a precise, even temperature. I use this thing often in a lot of the recipes you're gonna see on this channel, so be sure to pick one up. You're also gonna need some sort of container that can hold a lot of water. I'm using a Cambro, but you can also use like a large pot or a bucket. Basically, just fill it up with water and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sous vide inside. Let me plug this thing in. I'm gonna set this to 140 and I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside while it comes to temperature. And while it does that, I'm gonna go ahead and season my chicken breast. So in this pan, I have one large chicken breast and all I'm gonna do is season it with a couple things here. I'm gonna go ahead and season this chicken with some paprika, some granulated garlic, salt, pepper, and some rosemary. And flip it over, just hit up the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up and make sure it coats the chicken. You can season your chicken with whatever you like. Um, this is just a recipe I found in, on a McCormick website and um, I like how it tastes and it comes out great. I actually got this chicken breast from buying a whole chicken and then I parted it into its separate parts and then I freezed them individually. It still has its uh, bones and rib cage intact. There's also still a little bit of skin on the top. Now that I got it all seasoned, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the bag that I froze it in. This bag is a food saver bag. If you don't have a food saver, you can just put this into a regular Ziploc bag. What you're gonna wanna do is just make sure you squeeze all the air out before you seal it. That way when you put it into the water, it doesn't have any air in the bag and float to the top. You're gonna want it to sink down all the way into the water. That way it gets fully cooked. Now that it's all sealed up, all I have to do is drop it in this water and I'm gonna let it sit in here for at least an hour and a half, but no more than four hours. There's a common misconception. There's a common misconception that chicken needs to be cooked to at least 165 degrees before it's considered safe to eat. I'll cut to the chase and long story short, Food safety is measured not only by the temperature, but also how long it has been cooking for at a specific temperature. So, chicken can be cooked at 140 degrees for at least 30 minutes, and it's considered safe to eat. We're gonna cook this for an additional hour just to be safe. If you end up cooking the chicken for longer than four hours, the meat and texture starts to change, and from what I've read, it doesn't come out that great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this for about two hours, and once we get back, I'll show you how we finish it off. All right, so the chicken's been cooking for about an hour and a half, almost two hours. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and take it out of this bag. Shut this off first and move this to the side. So you should be able to see here it's pretty cooked, it feels really warm. I'm putting, cut it open. Take it out of 
this back so you can see it. Looks like this. I went and put a small pan on the stove at about a medium high heat and melted a tablespoon of ghee. What I'm going to do is go ahead and sear off this chicken on each side for a couple of minutes till it's brown and the skin is nice and crispy. I'm going to wait for this ghee to warm up. It looks pretty hot already. And I'm going to go skin side down first. Watch out, this can get explosive. Now that the chicken's been cooked and browned and seared on all the sides, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Uh, that'll let it cool down and let all the juices settle a little bit. Once it's all cooled down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off all of the bones and then I'll go ahead and slice it. So it's been about 10 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and try and remove these rib bones without burning myself. This recipe works great for boneless, skinless chicken breasts as well. For those people who meal prep, you can cook a couple of these at a time and then just store them in the fridge and sear them off when you want to heat them up and you're ready to eat them. Once you get up, once you get your hand under there, pretty much just pulls out. Oh, there's the ribs. You can see how juicy the chicken is. Super moist. Mm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. A lot of flavor from the seasoning. Ah, it's so good. I'm just gonna make sure I got all the bones here. I like the one here. Damn, that's good. Go ahead and put the chicken down. It's so moist. I'll go ahead and slice this for you. See how moist that is. It's not stringy, super soft. that is. Normally if I can't finish an entire chicken breast, I'll save it in the fridge for the next day and then usually I'll cut really thin slices and put it over my ramen. The chicken also tastes great if you were to let it cool off and cube it up and throw it over a salad. Now that you guys know how to pull off a perfectly cooked chicken breast, do you think you would choose these over some chicken thighs? Make sure to leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. I'll post weekly videos on all things good in food, my life, and business. Thank you again for watching.